Hey everybody, this is Games Plus James, and welcome back to our Unity RPG tutorial series. So, in the last episode, we added some enemies to the game uh, for them to run around and to cause some problems for our player, but at the moment, we have an issue. They're, look at the way they're moving, it's all kind of stilted and stiff they just look like they're they look like they're programmed to move in a certain way because they're all moving at the same time which is no good for us we want to make it a little bit more uh, interesting looking uh, and of course they don't actually hurt the player at all so we're going to do a simple way to um kill the player when they get hit by them and eventually as we go further on and we build a, build an actual proper health system we'll um use that for hurting the player but for the moment we're just going to have it that if you hit off an enemy it kills you and you have to restart uh, okay, so first thing we're going to do is sort out these guys movement So we're going to load our slime controller script that we created in the last episode Going to open that up here in mono develop and What we're going to do is basically Add a little bit of randomness to the Counters that we're using so we're using our time to move counter for how long the objects for, or, sorry the objects the enemies stay moving and we're using our time between move counter to determine how long they stay still while they're not moving. So rather than have it be uh, just that particular number, last episode we used random range to decide which direction they were going to move. And now we're going to use random range to decide which uh, or how, how long both of those counters will last. And the way we're going to do it is we're going to set it up here in the start function the exact same way. So we're just going to comment these two out by putting two slashes in front of them so they're commented out now so they'll no longer actually do anything um, it's always best to rather than deleting something to just comment it out and then you don't have to worry about uh, if you go back at some point and say oh no actually that was a better way to do something then you'll know okay I just have it commented out I didn't just completely erase everything I have to work everything out again it's handy to keep things there that you think might be helpful again in the future Although these things won't become helpful again in the future, we're just doing it for good practice. Okay, so on our time between move counter, we're going to set that here, time between move counter. And rather than saying time between move counter is equal to time between move, we're going to say it's equal to random dot range of our time between move value, which uh, if we go back in here, I think it's what we set that to on our set it to two okay so we're, we'll work with that being two so say so our time between move is two so what we're going to do is multiply that by 0.75 f so basically three quarters of that value which will be 1.5 um, uh, and so that'll be the lowest number it can be and then the highest number it can be will be time between move multiplied by 1.25 f so what we're saying is whatever the time between move will be it'll be randomly decided between between three quarters of whatever value we set for time between move and one and a quarter of it so it'll be between for our time between move being two it'll be either 1.5 or 2.5 so it adds a little bit of a random element to it which really enhances the movement of the enemies and we'll see that now in a second so that's fine for the time between move counter. We need to do exactly the same with the time to move counter. So we say time to move counter is equal to random dot range. Uh, we we'll say uh, ooh, time to move multiplied by 0.75f and time between move multiplied by 1.25. F. Now, of course, you could do whatever values you want. You could have it be even more random. You could have it be between zero and whatever the maximum amount is that you want to kind of add a bit of variety. And the, the good thing about this is you can still make changes to the time to move and time between move within Unity without having to go back and recode everything every time. And But you still have a, an element of randomness to it all. So, so that's fine. That's, that's the initial settings. But... We don't want to use that every time, or that won't always be um, useful to us. So what we're going to say is we need to set it at the points down here where those things are being set. We need to put the relative uh, relevant bit of code in. So here we have the time between move counters. So we're just going to copy this whole bit here. 
again we're going to comment this out rather than deleting it and then we'll paste in the new improved version uh, we're going to copy the other line and down here again we're going to comment that one out and then paste it in below and then we're going to save this and convert it if you have to do that uh, sometimes you do sometimes you don't as I said before it's just a matter of sometimes it's an error that uh, is just relevant uh, inherent to like Windows versus Mac versus Unix whatever but this doesn't actually cause too much concern and won't affect your code really uh, so we hit play and now if we put the scene back out now you can immediately see they're all starting to move at different times and it looks just a little bit more alive and the longer the scene kind of goes on for the more movement that they'll have so as you can see now they're all kind of moving off on their own little things they're not kind of they don't look like they're just a machine uh, following their own following all the same uh, agenda basically uh, but now they look a little bit more random and a little bit more interesting which is good that's exactly what we want uh, but of course at the moment still they're not actually doing any damage to our players so we need to make them do a little bit of damage and just a simple way to make our players die uh, so rather than just pushing this guy around let's start writing some code so it's going to be again a very simple and straightforward bit we're going to keep going in our slime controller script um, and basically what we're going to say is <clears throat> we're going to go down here below void update so we have when our update loop starts with we do all this stuff in the middle of it and we have an opening bracket here and if we put the cursor beside that opening bracket we'll see the closing bracket that's associated with it and then down below that we want to do void on collision 2d other oh oh no sorry no that's that's the wrong thing we want to say on collision enter 2d sorry i was thinking wrong we're going to say void on collision enter 2d and you want to make sure you capitalize it all the exact same and then we open a bracket and say collision 2d other um, and so basically what this will do uh we've we've kind of covered this when we uh loaded a new area where we went into on trigger enter 2d and it was when we entered into a trigger zone um, but now we're doing on collision enter 2d and basically uh, when an on collision enter occurs whenever two objects with a, cl a collider um, attached to them so in the, for example we have a slime red has a circle collider and our player has a box collider so if those two colliders meet they will cause an on collision enter um, and what we're saying is on our script that's attached to the slime controller when when the slime collides with another object which will be whatever this object is here so we're saying whatever other object we collided with that has a 2d collision box attached to it then we want to do something with it so the first thing we need to do is find out if that's the player so if other dot game object dot name equals player so if the other object that just hit into us has the name player then we're going to do some things now the simple and most straightforward way to do it would be to just say destroy other dot game object let me just show this here now we'll save this we'll go back in here and if we hit play okay so now if we just walk into one of these guys oh our player is destroyed and that's it well, now we're getting an error because the camera is trying to follow the player object but it doesn't know where it is so we're just getting a whole bunch of errors and that's no use to us and basically the game doesn't do anything now the player has gone there's nothing we can do so we need a better way of doing it than that obviously i'm just going to clear this console here um so we can't use destroy the other game object so we'll just comment that out again but what we want to do basically is just we want the the um, the player to get deactivated rather than destroyed, and then we want to wait a certain amount of time and then reload the level so that um, 
so that we can start playing the game again basically so we're just going to say other dot game object dot set active so what we're saying there is the other which is what we found on the collide on the using the the collision enter uh, the other object and we're getting the game object that is attached to that and we're saying set whether that is active or not and we're setting it to be false so it's no longer active um so rather than destroying the player what that'll do is just kind of make it hidden so you can't actually do anything with it in the world you can't move the player anymore but um we would, won't need to worry about that because the player's gone um so we're just going to save that um now if we just just thinking here we want to reload the level and the thing if we we could go ahead and reload the level while destroying the other game object but then we'll end up uh, in a situation where the player won't actually load with the new level so we need to make sure that when we reload the level we actually set the player to be active again what when we reload them so we obviously need to wait a certain amount of time before we reload so let's go back up here and make something to um to reload so we'll say a, not, not oblique public public float uh wait to reload we'll call it and i'll just be how long to reload and we need to know whether the game is currently reloading because if we have a counter we know that's going to want to count down in the update loop but we don't want it always to be counting down so we need to have a, a, a value for when it's counting down. So we'll use, uh, not public, we'll just do private bool, um, we'll, say, we'll just say reloading. Private bool reloading. So as soon as the player gets killed, we want to make sure that reloading is now equal to true. So that's telling the game, okay, the, the player has been set to false. We need to reload the level. So then in our update loop, if we just, again, if we click on the first curly bracket, we find where the closed one is. So then before that, we can type in here, um, if reloading, so if reloading is true, then what we want to do is um, our time to reload. No, sorry. Do we say wait to, wait to reload? Yes. Wait to reload minus equals uh, time dot delta time. So that means it'll just keep counting down our wait to reload. And then once our wait to reload gets below zero, so if wait to reload is less than zero, then inside the curly brackets, we want to say, okay, we want to reload the whole level um, and just kind of start things afresh. So we will say application dot load, oops, application dot load level much like we did for going to a new area but now we're just going to say application dot load level and instead of um having to get the string name of the level and enter it in or and stuff like that we can just very simply use application application dot loaded level and loaded level will just basically tell um it'll tell it'll just tell the game basically what level is currently loaded and then it knows okay just reload that same level so we'll put our semicolon at the end there the only thing we're missing at the moment is our player so the the level will load again but our player will still be set set to false because remember we're always keeping our player active when a new scene is loaded up so we need to make sure that our player is being reset to active and within within the uh, collision here it's very easy to interact with that object because we know that something has just collided with the slime and we're setting it to be false but when we go back up here we don't know th this update loop doesn't know what is uh, colliding with the with the slime or anything like that we can't rely on that being known so we're going to need to set a reference to the player in our on collision enter so if we go back up to our variables here we're going to say private game object and um, just call it the player so the player if we scroll back down here in our collision enter we just want to say the player dot uh, sorry no the player is equal to other dot game object 
So what that's saying is, okay, whatever thing we just collided with that killed us, or that we just killed, um, which is the player, we're setting that to be the current player within our script. So then in our reloading function, as soon as the level is loaded, we can say uh, the player dot set active true and hit our semicolons. Okay, so now when we pop back in, we should have a very simple and straightforward way to kill our player and just reset the area. And like I said, we will build a proper health system as we go further in the series. But for now, it's just a simple way. And it's a, a way that we will uh, partially use uh, going forward as well. So when our player does actually get killed in the future, we'll use something very similar to this to reload them uh, at, at any given point. Okay, so we can wander around, la 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 la, and then... Oh, actually, before we do anything, I just realised <laughs> we never actually said, uh, or we never set a time... Uh, down on our slime controller, we didn't set a wait to reload time, so it'll just do it instantly and that won't be much use to us. So I'm just going to hold control and highlight all of our slimes, and then down here I'm just going to set wait to reload to be 2, so now they all have wait to reload to be 2, and we'll play again. And if all goes according to plan, we should see, if we walk into one, our player disappears, and we go back, pop them back to the start like that. So here we go, players there, disappear back to the start. Just like that. So there you go, a very simple and straightforward way to reload our player back um, at the start of a level. Uh, like I said, this isn't the system we will actually properly use in the game. It's a very simple and basic way of doing it, but for now it's uh, something that will keep... Um, Keep our game feeling more like a game rather than just walk into things and disappearing and having to restart our whole game again. So thanks for watching this episode. I will be back soon with more uh, tutorial goodness. And of course, we need a way to take out these enemies now that they're causing us a bit of a threat. So in the next episode, we're going to take a look at that. So thanks for watching and I'll see you all very soon. Thanks for checking out this episode, and if you want even more Games Plus James goodness, make sure you hit those subscribe and like buttons. You can also find me on Twitter and Facebook by following the links on screen, where you can find out all the latest news about the channel. And if you want to help support the show, check out the Patreon page, where you can get exclusive content in return for helping make the channel even better. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for more.